Well, you've had an extensive recording career. Um, and uh, what were some of your first uh, recordings that you remember being on? Yeah, well, you know, if you went way back, uh, when I was a kid playing on the road, uh, I mean, I, was, I went on the road when I was 17, a week out of high school, playing with a, what we'd call a territory band. You, you know, we had a caravan of cars. We'd drove mostly around the Midwest, but uh, anyway, so for about three years we did this, playing at uh, every Holiday Inn and Ramadi Inn would have a lounge and a band back in those days. And so there were tons of groups like ours that would, you know, do this. And so you'd play for you know, two weeks with a, we had an agent, uh, let's see, uh, what was the name of the agency? Anyway, uh, you play for two weeks with a four week option. Generally, that was the contract. Uh, Dave Jackson artist agency. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, th I think he's retired now. And so we would do that and sometimes they keep us longer. I did one gig in, uh, New Hampshire, all the way up there in New, uh, North Conway, we were there for two years. Wow. So I, be, I became a New Englander at that wow. time. And I thought I was going to end up living there. Okay. Know, in the cold. Yeah. <laughs> but beautiful area. Yeah. Anyway, so I kind of went off on a tangent. So we recorded that group. We made a 45, of, uh, I believe it was a 45. I don't think I have it any longer, at the old Don Warnock Studios. It's Studio Stage 3 Productions. That's probably before your time. Yes. And Don Warnock was a, uh, a local weatherman at a TV station. And then he dabbled with recording. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that was my first recording. What about like your first jazz recording? First jazz recording would, probably would be, uh, it, would, it would be, I believe, the Steve Houghton. Album. Oh, the? In 83. You mean this? That's it. Wow, well, you got one of those. I got one. Yeah, that's yeah. the funniest cover. Yeah, that's the. Yeah. Uh, get this up. I'll put that there. Yeah, the, yeah. The Steve Houghton album, and uh, yeah, I got one of these on Discogs, uh, sealed in the wrapper. Really? For like eight bucks. I don't want to, you know. Wow. Discount your product or anything, but I was so excited wow, to get yeah. that. That was a ball doing that. Steve's fabulous drummer, and of course Bob Bowman, uh, and uh, we did that at uh, in Reseda, California, uh, at Captain and Tennille's studio. Okay. Yeah, they were there, and uh, so Steve rented that out. So uh, direct to two track live. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people were doing that back then. It was a little cheaper. Uh -huh. And it sounded good. And, but That's a good sounding record. But, but the uh, thing is, you couldn't do much fixing or right. anything. So, luckily, we, we just kind of sat up. We weren't isolated or anything. You know, old school, we just played. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Nice. So, that was probably the first one that I did. Yeah. Um, and let's see. I could go on, but I don't really think I need to. Well, okay. <laughs> and then. We we have this uh, this Dues Blues release that uh, we uh, that was reissued uh, yeah. a few years back, but this was originally recorded back in 1988. 88. Right? That's right. Yeah. At Ocean Way, which is a big. That's one of the most you know famous recording studios in LA. Still there. Very very famous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was living in Seattle, and I flew back to do that. I wanted to play with Steve and Bob again. Right, same rhythm section. And, and then, but I had a piano player, so, yeah. And uh, two piano players on that, John Beasley, who's gone on to really good things. I think he lives in New York now. Wonderful player, he played with Freddie Hubbard, and he played with me with Sergio Mendes. Mm -hmm. And so I knew him well, really good player, and a, another LA uh, studio player named Dave Loeb is on there. Uh, anyway, John Beasley heard that Ocean Way had a cancellation, uh, because I didn't have studio figured out yet. 
and he said, you gotta grab it up now because seals and crofts had canceled at the last minute. Weren't they going to Mexico yeah, or something? Yeah, I, I think Nostradamus said that you know the world is coming or something, and they, that's the story, they fled to Mexico. <laughs> the world's ending, I'm going to TJ, <laughs> yeah. going to Tijuana. So we, we got it pretty, I think like 60 bucks an hour or something, pretty right. cheap, and right. I, I hired a really good engineer who did named Don Hahn, who was really from uh, back east, and he did a lot of old jazz recordings, Johnny Smith recordings. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Bunch of, so he was, you know, uh, he was a good choice. So that's that's how that went it's, down. It's just such a great sounding recording, and also live to dat. This was mixed mm -hmm. live to two track. That's right? right. Yeah. And I know when we did the reissue, you still had the dat tape. Yeah. And we took that dat tape over to Chad Mize's studio. And he had a DAT player, and yeah. he, you know, and we each made a transfer to digital, and then sent it up to uh, <coughs> Boiler Room Mastering up in Chicago, and then had yeah. it remastered. Yeah, uh, it's got nice little liner notes there from uh, Scott. You know, you know. Yeah, it? yeah, now, yeah. Is that it? Yeah, okay. And and so it's got a nice. There's a nice little biography of you in there. Yeah. And this is still available. It is. Yeah. And uh, GreenLadyLounge.com. Right. You can get this at Green Lady Lounge. You can yeah. get it from you on the gig. You, you can. I've always got them with me. Right, right. So this one's still available. That's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, that's, how old was that, 35 years old? <laughs> right, right. But, uh, yeah. Well, it'll be nice to have the, the new uh, the new recording with the yes. band that you're currently playing. Yeah, with. yeah. Yeah. Um, and I recorded a few things with Claire Fisher, uh, which was great fun playing with him. He's a genius. Uh, yeah. yeah. I know John yeah. Elliott spoke so highly of oh, Claire yeah. Fisher. He's just like, well, he's... Yeah, absolutely. He's the best. Uh, so that was really fun. Uh, and uh, I also did, I usually don't mention this because it kind of doesn't fit into my jazz framework, so to speak, but I did an album with uh, uh, with Barry White. You know I love you, baby. Yeah, and that was, that was really a ball. Three guitar players and uh, two bass players. Nathan East was one of the bass oh players as a young guy. Now he's very famous. Yeah. I remember seeing him on like the Eric Clapton videos. Yeah, yeah, and that was yeah. when he was slumming. Nicest you know? guy. Yeah, he always wanted to get together and play some bebop, you know, stuff. And, but because he probably didn't get to play that that much on gigs. No, because he's playing all. more contemporary type oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that was a lot of fun. And Barry White was a super nice guy, and he never sang during the sessions that we were there. We would play about two tunes, uh, double sessions every day. A session. Uh, uh, recording date is a three hour block of time. So that's one day. Okay, so you do that, go take a two hour lunch break, come back and do another session. So it's called a double session. So okay. we do that for a few weeks. Wow. Barry'd be gone on the road or something. We'd take some time off, come back to another few. So it took about six months to do this because of the staggered timing uh -huh. of it all. Uh -huh. And, uh, but he, he, uh, he was just in the booth and he would, uh, Interesting, we had really no music to work up, maybe a chord sheet, uh -huh. and he would come and dictate parts to us guitar players to play. Uh, he would just walk in the room and, and say, Danny, do this. You know, and so I'd pick that up and play. He said, yeah, that's it. And he'd go to the next guitar player, sit next to me, and he'd go, ta -da -ta or something and right. it fits it all together he's really good at that right right so yeah. he wouldn't he wasn't necessarily going to write it out but he knew what he wanted yeah and, and so he could communicate and then we it. play it over and over and over yeah so the groove is just right mm -hmm. yeah and so the, anyway that was a lot of fun no jazz playing of course but i like playing r b anyway so it's right. fun for me right. yeah well and it's fun when in guitar relation we play a few funk tunes yeah and you and brian get into those uh those kind of patterns yeah and uh, the, I love it. Yeah, sort of James Brown type guitar patterns. Yeah, see, James Brown was my early influences because uh, my older brother Gary, who's nine years my senior, uh, played drums and he played all the music in the house. So that's the stuff I listened to. And he was he was a real big James Brown fan, and he had all those records. So I heard that all the time, and I love that. Um, and I used to uh, pick up. Uh, my mother's broom and pantomime around the house playing the bass lines that I heard. Do -do 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 -do, you know, that kind right. of thing. And I, I just love that. So it's still in my system. That, right. That kind of playing, which is totally different than bebop, of course. So, yeah. 
And you, you played drums when you were younger, right? That was a, a one little bit. Yeah, I never took any lessons. My brother owned a set of drums. He played drums as a hobby, and they were there. Um, and that time, early on, I didn't. Well, my first instrument uh, <clears throat> was a set of bongos. Okay. My brother got me a set for my eighth birthday, so I started playing the bongos. I finally had an instrument, mm -hmm. you know. And I really like him. I jam with him and stuff. And I even played with some uh, neighborhood kids, guitar players and singers. And I'd play. We even did some little gigs at veterans hospitals. With you, know. you on bongos? But bongos first. Little and Danny then I bongos. migrated to drums. And okay. I, then I would do it on drums. I wasn't any good. I knew a few rock beats and it, maybe a shuffle. And that's about it. If you got a good shuffle. That might be so, all you need in Kansas <laughs> yeah, City. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I did that. And then... Uh, I may be jumping ahead in the questions you were going to ask me, but one thing sometimes leads to another. Sure. So, yeah. Um, and then, um, and then of course, then the Beatles came out. Right. And then uh, saw them in Ed Sullivan Show in '64. So, you know, of course, I had to have a guitar. Then mm. I wanted one. So, like most of us guitar players, a lot of us. You know, that's the reason we took it up, because of the Beatles, the people of my age right. group. And uh, so I borrowed, it, a friend of mine it, uh, loaned me a, uh, a cheap harmony acoustic guitar. And, uh, but it was great, I loved it. I, he showed me a few chords, and then I was kind of off to the races from that, so, yeah. <laughs> 